everybody. Along with Daryl Cheney, this is Ernie Johnson speaking to you from Atlanta, where tonight it will be the Braves against the Dodgers in game two of a two-game set. The Braves won the last... If you've ever listened or watched Braves baseball, and this year a whole lot of you have, you no doubt know Ernie Johnson. He's been broadcasting the exploits of our Braves for 15 years, bringing nearly 2,500 games to an audience that now totals some 22 million fans nationwide. If the Atlanta Braves can be called America's team, then that must qualify Ernie as America's announcer. His association with the Braves goes back to his start as a pitcher for the Boston Braves, then with the Milwaukee Braves. It was in 1960 that Ernie got his first crack at being on camera, hosting a local sports show. His first guest was Joe Garagiola. I think it might have been something like, what do you think of the spitball? Should they legalize it? it might be something like that. Joe Garagiola, he grabbed that and really ran with it. He's down the other end, he's talking, he's doing it. He's a broadcaster at the time, I think, for the Cardinals. So he's, he's in the broadcast business. He's talking, and I'm sitting there looking at him, and he takes up about five minutes talking to the other guys. He's kind of directing it. Finally, he turned around, looked down, and said, Ern, how am I doing? I said, fine, Joe, keep it up. <laughs> Boy, I was so happy. He was talking, and he was carrying the show. We talked after, and Joe came up, and that's when he gave me some advice I've always, I've always uh, remembered. He said, just try to be yourself and no one else. Don't try to pretend you're anyone else. Just be yourself. And he said, I don't think you're going to have any problem with this thing. Typical day for Ernie begins at about 4 p.m. as Ernie goes through the volumes of mail that pours into the Braves' front office. A lot of the mail is just saying uh, we're happy that the Braves are playing so well. We get some mail at times saying, don't give the other team so much credit. You know, that's what they say. Don't, don't say that Ozzie Smith is a great shortstop. And, uh, and I like that because that shows that we are being fair to the other player, and you've got to be fair to the other player. Then it's down on the field to record the pregame show that goes out to the some 70 radio stations that make up the Braves network. Before becoming number one man on the Braves squad, Ernie shared the mic with Milo Hamilton. Milo taught me a lot. Uh, taught me to be prepared, and, and, uh, and I'll never be as prepared as he was, but uh, I always felt that I went into a broadcast well prepared. Ernie now heads up one of the best broadcast teams in sports, made up of Pete Van Weeren, Skip Carey, and Daryl Chaney. Ernie and I have a lot in common, both being former professional baseball players, both having an opportunity to play in the World Series. I just hope along the line somewhere when I get to uh, be in the business as long as Ernie Johnson has been, that I'm as smooth as Ernie Johnson is right now. I'll tell you what, it's a very small booth, and it's a very long summer, and I think the four of us are very fortunate to, uh, to have the kind of relationship with one another that we do have, and all that stems from the number one guy, and that's Ernie. Tonight, the Braves are playing the Los Angeles Dodgers, and a crowd of 36,000 is sprinkled with celebrities, such as Burt Reynolds, Lonnie Anderson, and Jim Neighbors. On the mound for the Dodgers is the ace, Fernando Venezuela. Before the game, Ernie ran into a fellow broadcaster he has long admired. Dodger voice, Vin Scully. He's a, he's a delightful human being. He was a good pitcher. He was a, a humble man, uh, the kind of man you would instinctively like. And after 33 years, I still like it. The most difficult thing about being a baseball broadcaster is, number one, you've got to have some appeal for a long period of time. You're almost with these people every day, 162 ball games. But the most difficult thing to do is to fill. I mean, to fill time. There's a lot of dead time in a baseball game. No worries tonight, however, as the Braves literally whoop up on the Dodgers 10 to 3 including a homer by Bob Horner and a grand slam by Bruce Benedict. And catching his second game, Benedict. Ernie's pitching for the Milwaukee Braves in 1957 landed him in the World Series. That championship team recently reunited for an old-timers game. 25 years later, Ernie was back on the mound, although the style has changed somewhat. When the last out has been called, Ernie makes his escape to his farm north of Atlanta, which he shares with his wife of 35 years, Lois. This is not the best of lies for a wife. Uh, you're on the road uh, 81 uh, 
days out of every year. And uh, as I mentioned, we've been married 35 years. And one day, Lois said, actually, it's only 17, or you've been on the road for 17. I was a cheerleader. And yeah, he was at a ball game. Yeah. <laughs> he was at a ball game with another girl. And we kind of caught each other's eye. Of course, I'm much older. I'm four years older. And I had won the war. See, we were losing when we went in. So I figured when we get out, I had won it. And uh, I True. tried to impress her. True. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> Even with Ernie on the road half the year, the Johnsons have managed to raise three kids, including Ernie Jr., now a TV reporter in Atlanta. I was Ernie's best man. He, got, he asked me to be his best man. He was married. And uh, he, he gave me the gift uh, that the best man gets. And it was a big pewter beer mug. And it said, my best man, my best friend. Well, that gripped me a little bit. And then the date. And the da my daughters have looked at that and said, you know, it almost brought tears to their eyes. And, uh, and, and when your kids want to come home and uh, want to see mom and dad, uh, I think it's all been worthwhile. It really has. Ernie's been with the Braves an amazing 38 years. His voice has become synonymous with America's team. And Ernie Johnson expects to be with his club for a long time to come. If anyone knocks baseball, I'm upset because I think it's a wonderful life.